Hi folks, I'm Nathan, two guys in a ride, and welcome to our how-to video on the 2019 Ford Ranger. This is the Lariat trim level. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in New Ulm, Minnesota. All right, on the driver's information screen, of course, on the far left, you've got a digital information screen that has to do particularly with vehicle information. Then you've got a speedometer in the middle, and then on the far right, you've got more uh, infotainment information on that digital screen. All right, so starting on the far left, you have got on the steering wheel on the left-hand side, so it corresponds with the left-hand side screen. You've got four cursor arrows, an OK button, and then, of course, down below, you do have your, your cruise on and off, resume, cancel, uh, increase the gap, decrease the gap, and then set buttons. But the buttons we're going to be using are the ones right up here. So uh, if I take and I press left, you're going to get the menu. So these are all the menu items that we can go through. Okay, so we're going to start, of course, with display mode. It shows you a little arrow pointing to the right, so you click right, and then you get this screen. Now, you notice in the far top left-hand corner, there are four, uh, three arrows that are lit up. So you can go up, you can go down, or you can go left. Now, if you go left, you're gonna go back to the main menu system. So, I'm gonna go up, and it changes the display from uh, fuel and engine temperature to just fuel. I'm gonna go up again, now it takes me to distance to empty plus fuel. Go up again, I get uh, my average speed and then I can click and hold OK to reset that. Click it again, I get my tire pressure. Click it again, I get my digital speedometer and my distance to empty. And then I am back to this screen. All right, so now I'm gonna go left. I'm gonna go down to trip one and two. Press the right button. Here's trip one. And I can either go up or down or left. And I know left will take me back to that main screen. So here's trip two. And on either one of these, you can just press OK to reset it. I'm going to go to the left, go down to fuel economy. I'm going to press the right button. All right, here's my average fuel economy. Distance to empty plus now my average miles per gallon and distance to empty in a nice graph form. Uh, auto start stop. Just tells you that the engine's on, this, your normal operations. Okay, and then back to uh, fuel economy. All right, so I'm going to press the back left arrow. I'm going to go down to driver's assist. Press the right arrow. Now here I'm going to go up a little bit because we have a few things. If you are towing a trailer, um, having that trailer sway control on is helpful. So you can just click the OK button to check it or click it to uncheck it. Checked means it's active. Going down to cruise control, I'm going to press right. I can have this as adaptive, and if you don't like adaptive, you can switch it to normal. Okay, so I am going to go back and switch that to adaptive. I, I happen to like that feature. All right, I'm going to go left to go back, down to, oops, down one to driver alert over again. And I have to go right again. All right, so... This is it says unavailable because we're not actually driving. But if I were driving, that little those little dash lines would would kind of fill up. And when they were full, then it would suggest I take a break. It senses you doing things like weaving in between the lines and things. I'm gonna go back again. I'm gonna go left again. Lane keeping system. I'm gonna go to the right. Now I've got three things: mode, intensity, and uh, alert sensitivity. So on mode, I'm gonna press right. And I can have alert only, aid only, or both. And all I have to do is click the OK button. I'm going to go left to the back here. I'm going to go down one to intensity. I'm going to go to the right. And I can set the intensity to high, normal, or low. And these are things that you're going to have to just kind of experiment with. And again, you'd go to where you want, press OK, and then it would select that one. Now I'm going to go down to alert sensitivity. I'm going to go over one here. Now I can have it normal or increased. I'm going to go back one. I'm going to go back again. Pre-collision assist. I'm going to go to the right. Now I can either have it on or if I went to the right and go down and click OK, I can turn it off. I'm going to hit the left arrow because I definitely want to leave that on. The alert sensitivity. If I go to the right, again, your choice is high, normal, or low. Click OK for the one that you want. I'm going to kick the left arrow. 
distance indication. If they want, if you want the vehicle to tell you how far away you are, you can turn that on and then it will show you that. Active braking. You can have that turned off, but the pre-collision still turned on. I would definitely leave the active braking on. All right, that's part of the safety feature. All right, let's go to the left and blind spot. If I go to the right, um, I can have it on or off with just the click of a button. I can go down to trailer and I can pre-program a trailer for trailer A, B, or C so the blind spot will accommodate for it. And then I can set the trailer length in here too. So for instance, trailer A doesn't tell me, oh, there I go. If I press the OK button, it'll take you through a series of questions to figure out how wide it is. So you can do it right from your vehicle. Okay, so that's that's where you, you set that. Be aware if you go into this, you can't get back out of it until you actually set it. So I actually had to set a trailer length to get a uh, trailer and a, uh, and a trailer length to get that, but um, but that's where you go to get it. I'm gonna press the left button to go back again. Uh, cross traffic alert is, is a simple on or off. I would suggest leaving that on. Uh, trailer sway again, second place it's at, and then of course cruise control we've already looked at. That's just gonna be adaptive or normal. Driver alert we've already seen. Um, lane keeping assist and pre collision we've seen as well. So. Let's go back and let's go down to the last one here. This is settings. If I go to the right, uh, under vehicle, I can have the auto engine off turned off. That, that's, a, that's a fuel saving thing. But if you leave that check mark and you're sitting idling for a while, the truck will just shut off. It'll, it'll restart automatically when you press the accelerator, but it's supposed to save fuel. Some people find that annoying, so that's where you turn that off. Lighting. Okay, you can have auto high beam. You can set the auto lamp delay for up to 120 seconds. That's when you get out of the car and the lights are still on. Uh, and then they automatically turn off after X number of seconds. I'm going to press the left button. Daytime running lights. You can have those off. Uh, at least in the state of Minnesota, you get insurance discount for having those. So I would leave those on. Locks, you can go in here. Again, it's just a click of the OK button. Okay, to set those things, but that's where those settings are. You can do a neutral tow right here. Uh, oil life reset, when you change your oil, you can right, just hold OK to reset it. Uh, remote start, okay? So you can look at climate control. Do you want it on auto or last setting? So auto will just, the vehicle will sense if it's cold or hot and then turn on the appropriate things in the climate settings to get your vehicle ready for you. Or you can say whatever was set on last and just click the OK button. I'm going to click the left there to go back. Under seats here, uh, seats can be auto or off. And again, um, uh, off means that you start the car in cold weather, you'll get in, your car will be warming and the heat will be going, but the heated seats won't be on. If you leave auto, it'll sense it's cold and turn the heated seats on. And go back. You can set how long the remote start runs, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or 15 minutes. Just select it and press OK. And then you can turn the whole remote start system off and remote won't work. Okay, do that and it's on again. Okay, you can go down and look at seat belts here. You can see who's buckled. And you look at wipers. That's courtesy wipe right there. You can have that on or off. Uh, typically, that would mean something like when you turn your headlights on, the windshield wipers give you a one swipe. Rain sensing, you can have that on or off. So the harder it rains, the faster your windshield wipers go on auto. If you switch that off, you just have to manually adjust them. Okay, I'm going to come back down here. That's the end of this. I'm going to come back down again. Under my key, uh, you can, you'd have to go down and create a key, but that allows you to preset some things in the vehicle. And then finally, display setup to the right. You can look at measurement units and then just change them. Press OK. You can change the temperature units. You can look at gauge display. Okay, so you can have fuel gauge or fuel and tack. Okay, so you saw that change to attack there, but you notice when you're in fuel gauge, uh, remember there was a screen where you actually gave you another tack. So I, you know, you can just use your preference tire pressure. You can change the measurements there. Language, and that's it. I'm gonna go back again. 
and I'm going to go back one more, and that is the end of the left screen. So quite a few things in there. Okay, over to the right screen. To do that, we're going to use the four cursor arrows and the OK button on the right side of the screen. Now, down below that, you do have volume, you have voice command, you have a mute button, and then, of course, you have a skip forward, skip backwards for stations, uh, and then you have a phone hang up and uh, a phone on. All right, so up here, if I press the left arrow, you have entertainment, navigation, and phone. So starting with entertainment, I'm going to go to the right. Okay, you get your stations. Now you notice that the, the top little four arrows on the screen show that I can press any one of them. So I'm gonna press the right arrow again. This is my sources. So I can have AM, FM, Sirius XM. Okay, and, and if you had something else Bluetooth connected, that would show up there as well. I'm gonna go left, I'm gonna go down. This is where I change the stations. And if I hit these buttons, it's going to it's going to jump to the next station the next preset i should say all right uh, i'm going to go left so that's how you get to in, uh, entertainment navigation this is equipped with navigation so if i go here if the no navigation is running i get a compass but if navigation is running i get turn by turn so it's nice to have a compass it also gives you your outdoor temperature and the clock I'm going to go left again. I'm going to go down to phone. This is where you access your phone. I don't have one hooked up currently, but if you did, this is where you'd see it. You, you could scroll through a menu to do, you know, look at messages or make a phone call or, you know, get your contacts and that kind of stuff. Okay, and that's it. So next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. All right, so let's talk about the infotainment screen. This is a Sync 3 system. It has the Bang & Olufsen 10 speaker system, which runs about 675 watts out of the amplifier. It has, of course, nav built-in navigation, 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth, AM, FM, HD radio, Sirius XM, and Ford Pass Connect. So uh, the way the screen is, is set up, this is the home screen that we're on right now. And you've got navigation, you've got media, and then you've got a phone. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just connect a phone now. So to show you how to do that, you just click connect a phone. Then you take your phone, turn it on, go to settings, go to your Bluetooth, make sure Bluetooth is turned on, and then on your phone, scroll to the bottom of the list of Bluetooth devices. And I'm going to click here, add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So it should just take a minute. There it is. It says Ford Ranger. I'm going to click on it. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay. So on my phone, it does ask me if I want to allow contacts and that kind of stuff to sync. If this is your vehicle, you want to click yes. I click no because I don't want my contact information in there, but you would. Now, it comes up with a final screen, and you, here you can turn on Ford's 911 Assist. If you want, you can set this particular phone that you, we just hooked up as a favorite, and then you can say automatic contact download. I'm going to turn that off because I don't want it to. You can always click on the little I for some more information if you want. Okay, so now if I go here to home, now it's going to show my phone. Okay, right? so these are shortcuts underneath here. So, like this phone button is the same as this one. It's going to do the same thing. Audio is going to do the same as that does. Navigation is going to do the same as clicking there. Okay. The app button down here gives you a few other choices and then settings gives you all the other things that are apps that have to do with the vehicle. So uh, before we go through those, take a look at the top. You've got your temperature settings. So if I adjust mine, you can see it change. Okay. And then the other side is for the passenger. And then, of course, you have a clock in the middle and, again, outdoor uh, ambient temperature. Typically, if you just click right on the clock, it brings up all the stuff you need to change the time. Okay, so let's start with audio, and I'm going to click here. All right, so here we are in FM radio, and uh, FM, AM, and Sirius XM are all laid out the same. So I'm going to show you how to adjust things in FM, and then I'll quickly show you Sirius XM and AM, but they work the same way. So how do you tune? Okay, so the first thing I can do is just grab the tuning knob that's down here, 
and I can go, you know, number by number here. As soon as you come to something that is a preset, you notice it'll light it up, and that's fine. All right, so that's one way. Now, the other way, if you want to tune, you can go up here to direct tune, and then you can just type in a station, hit enter, and there you go. How do you save a station, right, as a preset? So let's say I'm on 106.7. You take any one of these presets, and there are three screens of them. So I can go here, and I can go here. And you may find that some are blank, but you just click and hold. And there I go. Okay? And that is how you find tune it. That's how you find the station, and then that's how you save a preset. And then the buttons on your stream wheel will take you to all the presets, or these will. If you want to do a scan, like what's the next station available, you can use the forward or back buttons here. Just give them one push and they'll go to the next available station. All right, so those, that's how you tune. And if you want to take a look at uh, like your volume and stuff, if you go to settings and you can go to sound. Now here you can click and drag or use the arrows you got treble, mid-range, bass, balance, and fade right here. So if I click on the arrow, it's going to take you there. Of course, you can click and drag that if you want. You can use the arrows here. You can set the balance. Hit the back button. Speed compensated volume. If you turn that on, I happen to like that. You can set it low, medium, or high, but it compensates you. The, louder, the faster you're driving, the louder the vehicle is inside. So it turns up the volume. Basically, it tries to keep it... Um, uniform in your ear no matter what speed you're going and you can change them from stereo to surround right there i'm gonna go back and go back again go to audio all right so i said it works the same on am fm and sirius xm so here i'm going to go to am for a minute see it layout's exactly the same you're going to do it everything exactly the same way and then if i go to sirius xm same thing. You do get a few additional things. Your favorites look a little different. Your presets here. You can bookmark things. You can go backwards when something's playing. To tune, now you've got this button here, and you can do a direct tune right there. But otherwise, it works the same way. All right, that's audio. Let's go over to climate for a minute. Now, you've got lots of physical climates uh, in the vehicle, but you do not have a sync button. So if the passenger sets their side to one temperature, you set yours to another in order to sync it back. Ford Hat calls it a dual button, but that's in the screen only. So you do have to go in there to get that. Pretty much everything else you can access down below, but you got your temperature settings here, power on or off. You can take a look at, at the menu for max AC, um, max to frost. Um, so I won't go over all those are pretty self-explanatory, but that's where you find them. I'm going to go to phone for a minute. So on the phone here, I can go to change phone. I can look at text messages. I can get my keypad right here. Um, I can set it to don't disturb. I can click this and use Siri. However, you can use the voice command button to do Siri as well. Um, you can look at recent call list and contacts. If I just click on my phone... Then it just brings up another list here where I can view devices, manage contacts, set your, uh, set your phone ringtone. Right? So you can use the phone one or set it to any number of other ones from the vehicle. Right? Uh, you can get a roaming warning, mute audio and privacy, low battery notification. It's kind of nice to have show up. We'll turn that one on. Okay, we'll go back again. All right, that's your phone. Let's go over to navigation for a minute. And the navigation here, to, in order to plot a course, if you want to do it physically, just click on the search button. And then you can just start typing. It popped up a suggestion, so it's going to search for McDonald's. Okay, and then you can click on one of them. And then you can click start. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted route, and then the route guidance will start. Okay, to cancel a route, click the red X. 
click yes. Now, that works great if you are sitting, but if you are driving, it's a little safer to use the voice command. So I'm going to use the voice command that's on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. It's going to be just a quick push and release. Find McDonald's. Please say a line number, next page, or say none of those. Three. When ready, press the voice button and then say, set as destination, or dial the number. Set as destination. Setting new destination. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. And there you go. So you can do all of that through that little voice button on your um, on your steering wheel without ever having to look down at the navigation screen. All right, I'm going to click the red X here. I'm gonna can you could also cancel via voice command. So now, if I want to take a look at a few more things, like um, you can you can zoom in, zoom out. You can also pinch. And if I go down here to menu, I can make some settings. So these are mostly like a one-time setting thing, but screen view basically, you can take it, you want to get you can have the full map view like we had, or you can get a highway exit. So then exit information comes here, but your map shrinks way up. Right? Uh, I'm gonna go to screen view and change that back to full map. You can get uh, a traffic list. Okay, I'm not going to start that, but you can. Okay, so now I switched it back to full view. Um, navigation settings. What are your map preferences? You want 3D city model, breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs will leave a trail wherever you go, so if you're off-road, you can find your way back. Or if there's a road the, nap, the navigation hasn't mapped, that'll allow you to get back to where you started. POI icons. That stands for point of interest. So when you, you turn those on, then they show up on your map, and you can have incident, like accidents, that kind of stuff. Those icons will show up if you want to. We'll go back here, route preferences. Yeah, I won't go through them all, but this is where you go through, and you just click to check things on or off. You can avoid freeways, avoid toll roads, that kind of stuff. So let's look through that list and make your settings. And then finally, navigation preferences down here. You can have guidance prompts, and if I click here, voice only, tones only, voice and tones. I'll click the X to get out of that, and then the hazard spot warning, same thing. You have some additional settings there. All right, so those are one-time things. You kind of set them once and you, you let it go. If you ever need to see like, what, where exactly am I because you're in a blizzard and you're stuck, well, this, this will tell you. Okay. You can look at your history, you can look at your favorites, you can look at different POIs right here, and that will just bring it up. So if you're looking for food, click on that, it's going to bring up a list, and then you can look for those. Okay, I'm going to go over one more screen. You can program a home and a work address. One, one suggestion that we have is, um, you know, it depends on when you sell the car, you need to erase all that information out of there. But you may want to program something for your home that's close to your home, but not your actual home. Uh, and then same thing maybe with your business so that it, nothing is ever tracking you. That's just a suggestion. I'm going to press home again. So under apps, this comes with the Sirius XM travel link. It'll, you know, it will come free for a while and then you'll have to pay extra for it. But you get traffic lists, fuel prices, movie listings, weather, sports info, ski. I mean, it's just a whole bunch of really, really cool things. Let's just take a look at weather for a minute. But that is just really cool, getting that right on your vehicle like that. Okay, so let's go to settings. Or really look at sound. Clock brings you to the same place we were up before. Bluetooth here, you can, it's just turned on or off, add a device, and view devices. Phone we've already looked at. We looked at SiriusXM, navigation, mobile apps. All right, so under general, you've got language. And again, we, we saw this where we could change this in the driver's information screen. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, the one thing additionally you can do here is turn that touchscreen beep off. You can do automatic system updates. 
um, sync analytics about sync and this is your master reset in case something goes really haywire with your system you can try reset it that way that's under general if I go over here 911 assist I had that turned off but you know if you have an accident and senses it, it then it calls emergency services for you that you can turn that on there All right Wi-Fi this is where you access your Wi-Fi hotspot um, you can go straight to automatic updates and turn them on you can make other settings right here, get information for that. Uh, Ford Pass Connect is right here. This does have uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but we'll hook, we'll hook that up in a second. Um, under Vehicle, you can look at camera settings. And basically, if I click this Enhanced Parking Aid off, it's going to turn off the little sensor screen. It shows you like which which sensors front and rear are sensing things. You probably want to leave that on, at least I would. Rear view camera delay. If you go from reverse to drive, uh, the rear view camera stays on for about up to five miles an hour and then turns off. Gives, gives you a little extra time. Uh, under display here, you could turn the display off. Well, it's still running, but the, the screen is off. Just tap the screen to bring it back. You can change the background. You can change the brightness. Okay. And um, auto mode just makes the screen brighter during the day and darker at night. So you don't have so much glare, but you can set it automatically to day so it's the brightest or automatically to night so it is the darkest possible. Hit the back button. Voice control. That's that little voice command button on the screen wheel. Um, advanced mode allows you to do things like uh, the, 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 the commands you get back from the car are shortened. You can interrupt um, the, the command system in mid-sentence and tell it to do something, and it will just stop and do it. Okay. And then you can have phone confirmation, and you can see a list of voice commands that you can use. One more screen, you got valet mode, and then finally, ambient lighting. This works really easy. And basically, you just click on a color to select it, and then you can select the intensity by raising or lowering it. And then we go back here. All right, I'm going to go back here to home for a minute. And I said I would hook up a cable to do Apple CarPlay. So I'm going to pull out my cable and, and just plug it right into the uh, first USB port on the left. Now, you'll notice, okay, first of all, it went to there, but I'm going to click on this. You notice that Apple CarPlay now appears in my shortcuts. All right, so on Apple CarPlay, uh, this is just really, really cool. If you've not used it before, man, I would encourage you to spend a little time in your driveway playing with it. Um, it's way better than Bluetooth. So my phone is charging. I can now just turn my phone off and leave it for the rest of the trip. What it does is it takes the apps from your phone that'll work with the vehicle's infotainment system and puts them right here for you. So for instance, if I wanna to go to Google Maps, I don't have to use the car's navigation, okay? Let's say, well, I wanna program a route. That's easy. I take the voice command button and instead of doing a quick push and release, I click and hold until I hear Siri. <laughs> Siri, program a route to McDonald's. Okay. Here's what I found. Okay. So I have to click on the screen a couple times, but it, it does all the searching for me. Okay. So, I mean, that is just, just really, really, really cool. If you wonder how to end the route, you can just go here. You can use Siri again, but you just click end route right there. Okay. The, uh, the apps that show up here are your most recently used apps. And then that button just flips you back between the app view and the split screen view. So here I got navigation, uh, navigation button for home and media. Okay, just to point out here, I've got, you know, Apple Music here. Got my text messages I can get. I've got Google Maps, uh, Amazon Music, Waze, Pandora, almost anything, any kind of navigation app will work. All right, uh, I'm gonna go back here. Um, if you want to get back to the Ford's main infotainment screen. That's why they put that button in there and you just click and then you're back. All right.
that is it for the driver's information screen and the infotainment screen on the 2019 Ford Ranger. And again, this is a Lariat trim level. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful.